Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I have yet another book box to share with you. Some of you know if you've been watching my channel over the last few weeks, I am on a mission to get through all of the backlogged book boxes that I have sitting here in my office. So we started with over 20. I will say that any boxes that I'm receiving from October onwards probably won't get opened on the channel until after the new year. But by then I should be a lot more caught up and you won't be seeing quite as many book boxes. I know for some of you this is great news because you love your book boxes and for some of you you're not as interested in them but you're just here to support and I super duper appreciate that as well. The good news is is that right now I am posting two videos per day not both book boxes so you always have something else to watch of course that maybe uh, suits your interests a little bit more. Today's book box that I am opening is one from last year. It is the October 20. 2021 Once Upon a Book Club Adult Selection and of course that comes in this lovely hot pink box. I believe their young adult selections always come in a green box and then of course they do all kinds of fun limited edition boxes as well. I just opened their spooky Halloween box on the channel a few days ago. Now this was not sent to me for review. I was subscribed for a good part of last year and part of this year. I will probably subscribe eventually once I am like I said all caught up. The box is $49.99. That does include the shipping and of course I have a link and a code for you. The code is NOEL10 and that will save you 10%. I believe it works on other items as well as the subscription so definitely let me know if you decide to subscribe. The fun th part about Once Upon a Book Club is that everyone's reading the same book and as you read along when you come to a certain page you will find a sticky note that tells you to read a corresponding gift. The idea is to bring the novel to life and I do really enjoy it. I think it's nice that they also allow you to skip because they just give you a hint for what the upcoming book is both for the adult and young adult subscriptions and then you can decide if you want to get it or not and sometimes that allows you to kind of lengthen your subscription as well which is of course totally understandable. If you are interested by the way you guys I think we are going to do a Nobot Nook book club in the new year so make sure you're in the Nobot Nook. You do have to answer a couple of questions to get in there but I'll leave a link for that in the description box below as well so we'll have the Nobot Nook book nook or something like that. We'll come up with something and it might be a really fun good way of getting back into reading if that's something that you enjoy. So the book that we had I really enjoyed it. It was a little bit of a thriller. There were lots of twists and turns not just one at the end which is like I kind of hate that when that happens because once you figure it out if it's a little bit if you have figured it out, then you're waiting for one more surprise. And this book had several surprises. It is called In Another Light by AJ Banner. So I, I did enjoy it. Not too thick. It does have a little Once Upon a Book Club sticker on it. There were four gifts. None of them were really paper gifts. That's what the little sticky notes look like. Along with your book, you also receive this book club kit. The uh, hint uh, for this one was doppelganger. So they kind of give it a theme essentially. And then there's a like a longer hint that's a few paragraphs that you can find over on their website for every month. Now inside of these book club kits, they do often have a conversation with the author, AJ Banner. Then they have some discussion questions. If you are actually doing it with some friends, as a book club and they have read-along dates and the sort of benchmarks are the gifts so kind of like four different ones so if you're really doing a book club you could have like four different meetings or you know divide that up and then on the back they often have something like a game or a recipe in this case they had a word search for us I thought it was a good book I did enjoy it and that, like I said I did enjoy the gifts so what I usually do you guys is I go through and I show you all of the things I often read the author note if there is an author note and then I will read the passage that comes right before the sticky note and then show you what the gift was so it sometimes leads to spoilers sometimes not so much sometimes the spoilers don't give things away but if you're interested in checking it out after hearing the blurb from the back of the book then maybe hold off on this I will say that this box is still available in their shop as a ready to ship box but the ready to ship boxes are just a little bit more so it's $59.99 but if you're looking for a great like sort of encapsulated uh, gift for the reader in your life might be a good option right so along with the book club kit, that little pamphlet, we often get a nice little bookmark, of course, with a quote in this case. So this one has the same quote as our quote card, which is she could shut out the world, but other times she became restless. So it's kind of got like this spacey background, which is sort of interesting because I almost thought it was like going to have to do with like space because it was like a forest and everything. Um, definitely a thriller. On the back, we do have that author's note, which if I have some time, I will read that for you. And a nice little bonus, we did get a signed 
the book plate by the author AJ Banner this time around, which I do think is a really nice touch, something that you can get uh, through these book subscriptions that you wouldn't necessarily get if you were just buying it from an online retailer or even in your local bookshop. All right, you guys, so here is the blurb for you. When a woman sees her dead ringer, double lives cross paths. So it is literally a dead ringer because unfortunately she sees the woman on her mortuary table. I know, good pun though. So it says, three years ago, mortuary cosmetologist Phoebe Glassman lost her husband in a tragic accident. No longer the hopeful wife and mother she once was, Phoebe is disappearing into her grief and into the quietude of her job, restoring to the dead the illusion of life. Then the body of a woman named Pauline Steele arrives in the mortuary, and for Phoebe, everything changes. Pauline is unmistakably Phoebe's mirror image and bears an alarmingly familiar tattoo. But more startling is that among Pauline's effects is a faded photograph of Phoebe. Aided by an eccentric colleague, her curiosity sparked, Phoebe investigates her doppelganger's life and death and uncovers surprising clues to a shared past. Phoebe's emotional journey soon leads to shocking revelations about those closest to her and even herself. When she's driven to the brink, how much of what she discovers can she trust? So it's very interesting because you kind of, uh, you're kind of rooting for her, obviously, and there's a mystery. And at one point you sort of think that like, everyone thinks she's crazy, but she's on to something. So you should really listen to her. And then you're like, oh no, she's just unraveling and having a breakdown. And then there's another twist and you're like, oh, maybe she's on to something. So it is, it is a good one. I thought it was good. Not totally predictable. So let me go ahead and read the letter to you. I don't think I actually read it. So <laughs> let me go ahead and read it to you. It says, Dear Reader, until recently, all deaths in our, country, in our county in Washington state had to be reported to the coroner's office. Our current elected coroner changed that policy. Now, like most other counties in the United States, the coroner oversees only accidental or suspicious deaths. If a person dies in hospice or is under a doctor's care, the physician may fill out the death certificate and the coroner need not be involved. This is only one of many interesting facts I uncovered while conducting research for my novel In Another Light, in which mortuary cosmetologist Phoebe Glassman sees her lookalike in the on the mortuary table and feels compelled to investigate the young woman's death. As Phoebe embarks on a quest to discover the truth, she unearths dark secrets, deception, and her own deep grief at the loss of her husband and daughter in an accident three years earlier. Eventually, she begins to see the world and herself in a new light. She finds her way forward, even in the midst of chaos and loss. I hope you will find Phoebe's journey, although bittersweet, to be ultimately one of resilience and renewal. She finds a way to start again, to wake every day and appreciate some small wonder, a ray of light, a blossom of joy. I'm typing this letter to you on a vintage manual typewriter, an Olympia SM9 manufactured in 1965. This machine has endured the ravages of experience in 56 years of use and it's still going strong. This little typewriter is an example of perseverance, just like Phoebe. I composed the first draft and part of the second draft of In Another Light on my collection of antique typewriters before I scanned the typewritten pages into my computer. I love the percussion feel, the percussive feel of the typewriter keys, and when I'm using a manual typewriter, I feel close to my thoughts in the story, unencumbered by distractions. Typing on this machine also makes me feel like I'm speaking directly to you. Thank you for reading In Another Light. I wish you love and peace. That's so nice. I, I wish I had read that because I do love that idea of typing on an old-fashioned typewriter, but you guys know I am such a perfectionist. I could never ever do that. So... Let's have typewriter be our secret password for today. If you are new to this, when you come across a secret password in one of my videos, you wanna enter it along with your contact information in the Google form linked for you in the description box below. That's where all the good stuff is. And then at the end of the month, I go through and I use a random number picker to select a few winners to receive a mystery box as my way of saying thank you so much for watching my videos in their entirety. You do have to be subscribed to my channel. You have to be 18 years or older. You have to have a US or Canadian mailing address. And just a reminder, it is not affiliated with YouTube or any of the boxes that I open here on the channel it is just my way of showing my deep deep appreciation for all of you who spend a little time with me every single day all right let's get into it I know I've been talking a lot so let me give you a look at some of the gifts so they do a beautiful job of the packaging I think it's such a labor of love look how gorgeous that is now my pet peeve these days is not paper gifts but the fact that they print the page numbers on there because just in case it's a gift that I would like to re-gift to someone else or just use the box for something else I don't want it to be so obviously from a book box so I like it better when they do something like this one which was this lovely 
lightly tin and you can see they just put the page number on the ribbon. I realized that would take a lot of work for them to be tying ribbons on every single one of the pages, but um, I just think that's nicer. Sometimes they just do like a mailer like this with a page number sticker and of course that's disposable or reusable, which is fine too. Um, but again, I just think they spend so much money uh, doing the design of these beautiful boxes that I would like to be able to reuse them more easily or for them to translate that money into even better and higher quality gifts. That's just my two cents. So we did get four gifts this time. And this is again what it looks like. So it says, oh, so she has now seen, um, she has now seen Pauline on the table. It says, but there's a roll of antacid tablets, a red coated pill, a penny, numerous business cards and pocket photos in Pauline's wallet. It takes some time for Phoebe to look through all of them. Stuck to the back of a business card is a faded photograph creased and ripped on one side. It's only half a color picture. At first she doesn't quite comprehend what she has seen. The hair, the smile, the clothing. She recognizes the shirt, the background crowd at Pike Place Market in downtown Seattle. Her hands tremble, a cloud passing through the room. Invisible, cold fingers press on her throat. It can't be true, but it is. In Pauline Steele's purse, Phoebe has found a photograph of herself. Da, 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 spooky, spooky. So here it is. You've seen it a couple times now before. Page 27. I thought this was pretty cute. It was really pretty on the inside of the box as well. So we got a little pocketbook, a little uh, checkbook size wallet. I loved the colors and then I realized that it's little hearts and I'm just not really like a heart girl. I'm more into hearts than I used to be, but I thought it was pretty. I kind of wish it was either all black and white or all this taupe color, but I did like, of course, that it's got the gold accents. It's obviously just a faux leather, not like terrible quality though. So this, I do like that that opens up so you can actually get in there. Not that anyone uses cash and change these days, but sometimes there's places where you still like have parking meters where you need change. Little snap closure, not bad though, right? Like I thought this was pretty good. So I definitely, this is the size wallet that I prefer to use. And then they did include some like little fun add-ons to make it feel really real. We've got an Oregon driver's license and I feel bad for whoever got their picture used for poor Pauline Steele but it's actually like pretty thick so if you like use credit cards for anything like to uh, level tables or anything you could definitely use that one and of course we did get our little um, picture which is supposed to be ripped they kind of just showed us an image of it but it was kind of funny because clearly the girl that's in this picture she's not like smiling at the camera um, she doesn't necessarily look like the other one but she was supposed to be in the picture with um, Phoebe's ex-husband her 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 husband who passed away in the car accident. So it was supposed to be like a smiling picture of them traveling together, not just like a random photograph of a person. So I like the effort, but then the execution wasn't exactly like it should have been, which happens a lot with the gifts in this. But um, in terms of like a quality gift that I could reuse, but also again, would like to re-gift to someone. I, some of you suggested that you could just put a sticker over it, but like this box is so pretty. I don't want to put a sticker over it, but yes, I could do that for sure. All right. The next one was on page 170, uh, 118. Sorry. I like skipped ahead to the last one. So we had a lot of time before we got to that one. Let's see. So it says the side door squeaks and it sticks halfway when Phoebe tries to pull it closed. She has to yank extra hard. The air in the kitchen seems to draw into itself. Now she's on the inside looking toward the window, imagining herself crouched out there where she was last night looking in. So she has gone on an expedition to hunt down who she thinks might actually have her daughter who supposedly passed away at a car accident, but now she thinks that there might be, um, there might be, her husband might have just stolen her daughter, basically, and she's thinking maybe he faked their deaths, which is, I know, crazy, right? So it says, there's one origami frog on the kitchen counter, a simple crane on a side table. Phoebe's throat goes dry because her husband was really into origami before he passed away. She glances out the side window, glimpses the garage sale at an angle through the trees. She's made the excuse to go use the bathroom in inside where the garage sale is happening. She ventures into the hall. The kitchen door slams behind her. Mel, Wa Wal Mel is the little girl. Waltz is up next to her, disturbing the air. I can go pee by myself, she says, sticking out her bottom lip and glaring at Phoebe as she whirs past. So yes, she's like looking for clues. She's like, oh my gosh, this, uh, everything seems to be falling into place. She's like, this little girl looks exactly like my little girl would have looked if she was three years older. So she's very suspicious and she's 
hunting around in the house, right? You can totally imagine it. it would make a great movie. So here it is. I love that they did the ribbon. I thought that was a great, great idea. And we got this nice reusable tin because then here's an example where I can totally use this tin for so many things. Like maybe I'm going to make cookies. I used to do that, you guys, in my like former life. When I lived in Hawaii still, I would actually bake like five different kinds of cookies and send them off to my friends and family on the mainland. Like I know, I know it's a different life. Now the thought of doing that like gives me anxiety like because my kitchen's not big enough. So we got inside of it a bunch of origami and right on top they do have the instructions to make an origami frog. So um, we got a bunch of origami paper in some different colors. I thought that was a really cool gift and something that you could use um, and something very useful. And again, I did like that packaging. All right, the next one was on page 141. Let's see. So now she's uh, hunting everything down. Let's see. What is this? Oh, I saw pictures, Phoebe says distantly. He was difficult to recognize. The car went off a cliff. It wasn't exactly a big fiery accident. Anything like this accident? She uh, uh, unzips her backpack and whips open a file folder. She slides an article printed from the internet across the table. Maine, nine years ago. This guy disappears at sea out sailing with his wife and leaves her behind to mourn. Phoebe stares at the article, uncomprehending. What does this have to do with my husband? Read it, Zia says, pointing at the article. Go on. Phoebe reads, a curious ringing in her ears. You're saying this is your husband? Was. I found a picture of him. Ever wonder why he didn't want to have his picture posted online? So, I know. So then she meets a friend of Pauline's, and she, Pauline, is convinced that her husband was not a good guy. That Phoebe's husband was not a good guy. So here is our our little it's not a bat it's not a box it's a bag inside you guys we got a bag within a bag so it is an unsolved case files which is basically a game it's like a true crime like murder mystery clue in a file folder so I thought this was a really cool thing it says uh, your objective prove who killed Catherine Fox? So this is where they're like, you know, it deviates obviously from the book. It's we're not finding out who killed Pauline, um, but it's just like a game that you can play. So it's an unsolved case files. I thought that was super cool. It's like hunt a killer, but just in a file folder. So inside they give you this whole like dossier. Um, it's pretty neat, I thought. So we've got we've got crime scene photos. We've got her photo. We've got a bunch of like information. We've got uh, let's see. Let me show you. We've got newspaper clippings, all these kinds of things for you to figure it out. And then I believe there's like a QR code or a website that you go to at the end to uh, find it out. Yes. Yeah. You, so you go to a website to find out if you were right once you figure out who the killer is. So I thought that was really cool. I've always wanted to do one of these because I am such a true crime fan these days. So I've always wanted to do something like this. So I thought that was a really cool item to receive. Uh, we've got like the coroner's report, the police um, report. I just thought that was really cool. So that's kind of a neat item to receive in a box. So they're, they're winning me over with this one for sure. And then our last one was on page 175. And then sometimes, sometimes they're a little harder to find because it doesn't fit. So they have to put it towards the bottom of the page. So we get this little slip of paper. Oh, so let's see. My dad used to help me too, Phoebe says. I got scared when he tried, he tied my tooth to the doorknob and then shut the door. Sometimes it hurts. So he, she's still talking to this little girl, Mel, who she thinks might be her little girl. Mine didn't hurt. Well, that's lucky, Phoebe said. You have a good dad. He's the best daddy in the world. Mel spreads her arms and claps her hands. Phoebe takes off the backpack and pulls out a blue hairbrush. This was yours. Do you remember? She's lying. The hairbrush is new, unused. You used to brush, I used to brush your hair. I brush my own hair. Right, you're a big girl now, Phoebe says. But may I? Mel nods, pouting a little. Okay. Phoebe holds her breath, brushes Mel's hair, brushes and brushes. The child's hair is already tangled in the brush so easily. Now you're spiffy. You look like a special princess. She tucks the brush back into her backpack. DNA. Finally, I'll have proof. The, right, so that's what she's doing. She's being kind of creepy, honestly. At certain points, you're like, girl, you need to step away. She's telling herself that too. So here is our gift. And of course, it is a hairbrush, but it's not blue. That's the only thing I thought was so strange, you guys. So it did come in plastic. Let me see if I can open it up. It came in this pretty forest green. I was like, wait, how do they not have the blue hairbrush? Or maybe they ordered different colored hairbrushes and I just happened to get a green one. 
I mean, it seems like fairly good quality. It's one of those ones where it has the two layers of bristles, so it's got the little fine brush ones underneath the ones that have the little cap. Um, pretty good grip. I always like a new hairbrush because it feels good on my scalp. So. I thought all the gifts this time around were actually really, really good. You guys let me know what you thought in the comments below. I thought the book was good too. So if you're interested, definitely check out the box. It does make it a lot more fun to read along. And just in case you missed it, you guys, there was a secret password. So make sure you go back and watch to find out. I will see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.